I'd like to call this February the 18th meeting of the Cookville City Council to order. Could we have a roll call, please? Councilman Anderson. Present. Councilman Shelton. Here. Mayor Salee. Present. Vice Mayor Davis. Present. Councilman Williams. Present. All present. All right. Um, let's all rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> all right, Mr. Shipley, do we have any additions or corrections to the agenda tonight? No changes. Seeing no changes, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And a second. All right. Any discussion by the council? Seeing no discussion, all vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Now to the old business portion of our meeting. Uh, item two, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held February the 4th, 2010. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion by the council? Any comments from the audience? Uh, do, do we need to approve the minutes from the Monday meeting as well? No. Next meeting. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. That's a good question. I was thinking that too. Any other any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. New business. Uh, item <coughs> three. Consider resolution 100201 expressing opposition to SB 3020 HB 3171. Sponsor, Mr. Jim Shipley. Uh... Mayor and Council, this is a uh, resolution in opposition to this Senate Bill 3020, House Bill 3171. And uh, the actual bill says uh, that it amends Title 8, Chapter 27 of the Tennessee Code. In implementing the health insurance program and the group insurance plan for state employees, the state insurance committee or any contractor or third party administrator that it may use may not use or authorize the use of an exclusive contract between any hospital and the plan or its contractor or third-party <coughs> administrator. This section shall apply only to hospitals located in any county having a population of not less than 62,300, no more than 62,400, which is Putnam County, according to the 2000 federal census. And uh, I've got uh, several uh, several notes on the bill, but I thought I'd uh, call on Mr. Mattingly, who is the administrator of the hospital, to uh, address the address the council about this act. All right. Do we have a motion and a second? So move. Approval. Second. We have our motion and our second. <clears throat> Mr. Mattingly. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, if it's appropriate before I begin. Um, like to mark this very special occasion and uh, wish uh, Councilman Anderson happy 21st birthday. <laughs> and, uh, Times two or three. <laughs> so happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, here uh, in opposition, uh, speaking in opposition of Senate Bill uh, 3020 and House Bill 3171, uh, the following uh, points uh, are why uh, the Board of Trustees of Cookville Regional Medical Center has also approved uh, a unanimous resolution and forwarded to you for your consideration. SB 3020 targets only Putnam County and applies only to hospitals located in Putnam County. In other words, Cookville Regional Medical Center. We are the only hospital in the county. If approved by the General Assembly, SB 3020 will prohibit only CRMC from providing health care services for state employees through an exclusive contract in the future and do, does not apply to any other hospital in the state of Tennessee. CRMC does not mind competition, but this bill would eliminate our ability to compete. Senate Bill 3020 does not prohibit other private or public providers of health care services, such as an outpatient imaging center or an ambulatory surgery center, from entering, to, entering into an exclusive contract to provide health care services for state employees. 
Senate Bill 3020 implies that an exclusive contract to provide health care services for state employees is a bad thing. Actually, it's a good thing. An exclusive contract for health care services requires significant discounts on the part of the health care provider, and in this case, Cookville Regional Medical Center, for the payment of the services provided. An exclusive contract actually saves money for the state employee, the health plan, and the state of Tennessee. Senate Bill 3020 appears to be a private interest bill intended to benefit a particular private provider entity of health care services located in Putnam County. Senate Bill 3020 is not in the public welfare, as stated in Section 2 of the bill, for, uh, for state employees, the citizens of Cookville, Putnam County, or the Upper Cumberland region. The mission of Cookville Regional Medical Center is to provide health care services to meet the needs of all of the people of our community and our region. As the only public hospital, the only designated Medicare Rural Referral Center, and the only safety net hospital for under, underinsured and uninsured in the community and the region, CRMC provided over $21 million in charity care and uncompensated care for beneficiaries of government-sponsored health programs last year alone. CRMC must preserve its ability to treat all individuals regardless of their ability to pay. CRMC has a long and a very proud tradition of serving the public welfare. As a public hospital and regional medical center, it is CRMC's mission, obligation, and privilege to serve all the people of our community and region regardless of their health plan or payer status. Unlike many private health care provider entities, CRMC does not have the luxury of selecting only those patients with a commercial health plan or the fi financial means to pay for health care services. Senate Bill 3020, if approved by the General Assembly, will have a significant and negative impact on CRMC's ability to continue its mission as a public hospital and a regional medical center providing advanced health care services, emergency medical care services, call coverage, and serving the health care needs for all the people of our community and region. Those are the points and principles on which uh, the Board of Trustees objects to this bill. May I answer any questions for the Council? Thank you, Mr. Manley. <clears throat> I just had a question. Now, if I understand this correctly, the, this House bill, <clears throat> or in the Senate version, would would not require any other competing entity or any other entity in the city of Cookville or Putnam County from from seeing charity care as we have to see it. Is that correct? Uh, it does not address charity care at all in the bill. No, that's right. correct. So they they would not, even though we <clears throat> do not have a choice. Uh, the other entities that may provide health care services, they have a choice as to whether or not to see. Uh, charity care is that correct private entities uh, be, be they other health care providers or physicians do have a choice in in the payers or the types of patients in the health plans the, that they see if they choose not to see uninsured or ten care then that is their privilege as a public hospital we do not have that privilege we serve all people regardless of their ability to pay so for a bill that seems to be trying to prevent um, <clears throat> exclusive exclusiveness why is it exclusive to Putnam County's and city of, I mean as far as our population why is this not something that's got the entire state uh, uh, all so hospitals that's a good question mayor and the only way I can respond to that is you would have to speak to the bill's sponsors hmm. <clears throat> So there's no, um, based on that, there's nothing else that you've seen that specifically deals with, th that levels the playing field of apples to apples per se. I mean, this doesn't do that. Oh, like this definitely doesn't do this. this. You have to understand a couple of things, if I may. First of all, health care in the U.S. is not a free enterprise system. It doesn't function like the rest of the free enterprise system, and that's because the federal government and the state governments buy and pay for the majority of health care that is consumed in this country. For example, at Cookville Regional Medical Center, over 75 percent of the care we provide are for government-sponsored health plans, Medicare and TenCare, and charity care. 
so therefore, those prices are fixed. But there is no negotiation with federal and or state governments for the prices we receive for the services we render for Medicare or TennCare beneficiaries. As a matter of fact, with the most recent budget submitted by the governor to the legislature, there's a, uh, uh, there is a line item in the budget of over $200 million uh, to be cut from the current uh, TennCare program. Uh, so that's another added challenge uh, that we will have as a public hospital is to address all patients and uh, <coughs> we will continue to do our service and, and uh, treat all ten care patients despite those proposed cuts. It's been said that, that this would eliminate what would be a monopolistic agreement between the hospital and others or, or something like that. I, it's, it's my understanding that the, mono the agreements between health care providers, uh, state, state employee health care providers, these fees are negotiated long <coughs> before uh, the services are actually rendered, which is why it does meet, uh, for instance, in this case, a competitive bid uh, procedure because these services, whether it's uh, any kind of service that we would provide, that it, there is a fee that's negotiated with Cigna or Blue Cross for that service, <coughs> and that's paid, and we negotiated those terms prior to an employee from the state selecting either of the health care plans. Is that correct? Let me respond in, in a couple of different ways to that, uh, Councilman uh, uh, Williams. The state of Tennessee, a number of years ago, went through their process to select <clears throat> which health plans they would offer to state employees. And at the end of that process, they selected Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee and the Cigna Health Plan to offer for state employees. So first of all, it was a competitive process on the state's part to uh, select health plans for their employees. Of course, state employees have the option of choosing between Blue Cross Blue Shield or Cigna based on what their needs are and, and what their payments are or whatever the case may be. And so in that respect, there is choice. Also, I would say, although we do have an exclusive agreement uh, with uh, Cigna, uh, it does not as any health plan. Uh, it works the same way with for any health plan, uh, our health plan, your health plan. If you stay within your health plan, you are going to receive care and, and payment under that plan for the negotiated rate. But if you go outside, if you choose to go outside of that health plan, which you have the ability to do, and so do state employees, just because we have an exclusive contract with Cigna does not mean that they have to choose us. They can choose any health care provider that they would like. Now, when you go outside of your network, your health care plan, more than likely you're going to pay more money. But that's a choice that you make when you go outside of that plan, which is why, in this case, a uh, exclusive contract is good because of the significant discounts that uh, the beneficiaries or the enrollees under Cigna receive by contracting <coughs> with uh, our facility. But furthermore, it's inferred that the, that one rate is higher than the other when, as a hospital, you don't know which what the reimbursement rates are for both entities, do you? Or no, you know? no. I mean, so you, the the idea of it being. Um, <coughs> Uh, good for one, bad for the other. We, we don't know whether you're a state employee and you're with Blue Cross and you go to a different place to have a service done or whether you're a state employee and you're with Cigna and you go to a different place that you're not paying more or less because those those fees or those rates are confidential. Is that correct? That they're confidential in that we cannot share prices or what with one another and by hospital to hospital. That's illegal, obviously, right. so we cannot do that. Uh, and again, getting back to the point that, uh, you know, health care is not a free enterprise system. It's not like going into a fast food restaurant and before you, you have a menu of food and beverage items and it's got the price there. Unfortunately, in health care, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I wish it did. Uh, it would be a whole lot simpler for everybody involved, our patients, us, everyone. Uh, that's but that's not the way health care reimbursement works at the federal, state, board commercial level. Uh, we have different payment rates for Medicare, for TennCare, and basically for every commercial plan that we have. So uh, that's why health care is a little more complicated when it comes to reimbursement. Let me also add this, if I may. Uh, exclusive contracts between health plans and hospitals is not unique to Cookville Regional Medical Center. It's not unique to public hospitals, other hospitals throughout the state of Tennessee, be they public, private, or for-profit. Many of them have exclusive agreements with health plans to provide services for members of that plan. So it's not like we're doing something that no one else in the state is doing. This is done virtually across the state of Tennessee. Well, we as the city council obviously represent the, the citizens of Cookville and the citizens of Cookville own this hospital, uh, the taxpayers of, of Cookville. And you know, I, I just strongly oppose this direct attack 
upon our hospital by these local elected representatives. And, and I really have to question the intent and spirit of a bill that only targets Cook Regional Medical Center and was introduced without the knowledge or consultation of either you, uh, your hospital, the board, you yourself, any of us, or the direct city of Cookville. So I just find it in, um, you know, in very bad uh, judgment that, that this is being presented and, and seemingly done without any of our input to, to the detriment <clears throat> and harm of our very medical center that serves not only our city and our county, but a region of 300,000 people. Um, and, and also introduced by a representative that's not even the representative of the city of Cookville from an adjoining county of which our medical center serves and it just voted a, a five million dollar OB expansion because their hospital in White County does not have provide OB anymore and so I just I just find this um, really hard to understand and um, you know I'm I'm very thankful we're sending this uh, resolution to uh, the House and the Senate and in hopes that uh, uh, better judgment will prevail and this can be de defeated. Uh, I, I agree with what Councilman Shelton's saying. It's just the most interesting part to me about this is just so specific to us. Right. I mean, it, if it were, if it were uh, 5 percent or 10 percent of, uh, of the hospitals in, in the state of Tennessee, it would, it, it, to me it would seem like it makes more sense. But in this case, it only applies to us, as you stated earlier. Their exclusivity; uh, these exclusive agreements are are commonplace, uh, based upon the way uh, business is done. And so, of course, we would obviously we're strenuously object objecting to this legislation. But we'd we'd ask, uh, you know, if it's good for if it's good for the city of Cookville, surely it's good for all the all the hospitals in the state. Uh, so if they if they want to consider a bill in this manner, I think they should consider it for all hospitals, not just singling out one and um, obviously we we just plead with the our legislators to look at this for what it really is and and of course as you as you alluded to earlier your the hospital board has met uh, convened a, a special meeting to to give us a resolution as well and, and we're going to be sending that resolution uh, I'm assuming it was a unanimous approval for that resolution as well we're going to be yes. sending it to the state legislature along with our resolution tonight and uh, you know, we we would love, you know, an explanation uh, from the the sponsors uh, and from and from the legislators as to why you know we're at, we're we're somewhat of at a loss really uh, to represent our <clears throat> to for this to be just against <clears throat> our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. I, I find it very hard to believe that um, having worked with our state legislators uh previously as we all have that that i just can't help but to believe that they've been misinformed some way um because of the detriment this will cause to our hospital <clears throat> and to the people that it serves so I, I certainly hope that we can get them to either one consider a withdrawal or two prevent this from becoming uh, uh seeing passage in, in the state do we have any other comments from the council any? Well, I'm sorry, you know, that, that it has come to this point that we, and that they were, the legislators were not educated as to um, the details of the situation. I just want to say one thing, being a, uh, a past uh, state employee <coughs> myself and having chosen pro, uh, plans um, in my earlier life, since <laughs> Medicare now is my primary provider, but in, at that time, um, I had to study and choose which plan would be more suitable for myself and my family. So. Um, I would encourage state employees to, when the time comes when there's negotiations going on or when you have opportunity to choose, uh, get, educate yourself as to what coverage that you are going to have and the plans that you're offered as a state employee. Mm -hmm. Please do that because if you narrow yourself into some, I mean, this, this would teach us a lesson just this way. I mean, um, nothing wrong with, of course, this <coughs> particular signal or whatever, but whatever it is, plan X, plan Y, plan Z, look to see um, what kind of coverage that you're going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I think that's very important uh, for the future. That's good. Make an informed choice. Any comments from the audience? Any further comments from the council? Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Right, thank you, Mr. Shipley, Mr. Mattingly. 
Uh, that brings us to item four, consider reappointments to the Public <coughs> Building Authority Board. Sponsor, Mr. Jim Shipley. Uh, Mayor and Council, they have uh, three members that their terms have expired <coughs> when the uh, Public Building Authority was first established. Uh, in 2002, the terms were staggered, and uh, that's why some of these people's uh, terms have, have expired, and they want to be re they would like to be reappointed for another six-year term. Uh, according to the state law, the CEO of the city uh, uh, makes those appointments subject to the uh, confirmation by the legislative body, which is uh, what I'm doing now is recommending that we appoint uh, Gary Floater, uh, Sarah Johnson, and Melinda Swan to the Public Building Authority. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shipley. Do we have a motion? Move second? their approval. Second. I have the motion second. Any discussion by the council? We certainly appreciate mm -hmm. these yes. fine folks for Nobody's being serving. willing to serve we the do. community. <clears throat> Any other comments? Comments from the audience? Seeing none, all vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Shipley. Item five, consider approval of Tennessee Central Heritage Rail Trail Authority bylaws and or corporate agreement. Sponsor, Mr. Jim Shipley. Actually, Mr. Davidson. Mr. Oh, Mr. Davidson, sorry about that. Uh, Mayor and council members, in 2005, uh, Cookville, Allgood, Monterey, and Putnam County entered into an interlocal agreement to uh, create a rail trail authority to uh, task them to work on the rail trail project that would build the rail uh, bike trail from Cookville to Monterey. That authority is seeking, uh, would like to apply for a 501c3 <coughs> status, and there are a couple of documents that would have to be approved by all the governmental agencies uh, dealing with that. Two of those documents are a corporate agreement and the bylaws. The corporate agreement has been approved by Cookville, Allgood, Monterey, and Putnam County, and the last document that needs to be approved are the bylaws. Uh, back in December, those bylaws uh, were drafted. The Rail Trail Authority approved those. <coughs> The Joint Economic Community Development Board was convened. They reviewed those also. They approved those bylaws, sending those back to each individual uh, governmental entity to <coughs> consider those. Putnam County approved those, I think, back on January 19th. Uh, there was a couple of amendments that they asked to be included in there. They were very minor, the amendments that they asked to be added. The document you have includes those <coughs> amendments, and that document mirrors the original interlocal agreement that was drafted in November of 2005. And I can try to answer any questions that you might have about the bylaws. All right. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Do we have a motion to second to approve? Move approval. Second. I have the motion second. Any discussion by the council? Any comments from the audience? Seeing no further comments, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Davidson. Uh, item six, consider awarding bid for the Dogwood Park Irrigation System, the Leisure Services Department. Sponsor, Mr. Rick Woods. Mayor, members of council, uh, we advertise and receive bids for the <coughs> irrigation uh, system for Dogwood Park. Um, we received three bids, and we would recommend swift construction being low bidder meeting specifications. I right. recommend your approval. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Do we have a motion and a second? So moved. Moved. We have our motion second. Any discussion by the council? When do you anticipate this being done <laughs> or started? <laughs> um, I'd like to hear the answer to this myself. Yeah, they, they make it just lay it on top. I wish we sink knew. Sink into the ground. <laughs> Not so sure we're ever going to need an irrigation. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the bid price is good for eight months, um, so we know that. And. Um, <laughs> the first thing that's going to be done, we still have a little bit of, uh, of earthwork to be done there, and the, um, the fountain um, is ready to go. Not ready to go, but we're ready to begin work on that. So uh, we also have some, some uh, landscaping that's going to be, need to be done as the irrigation is done as well. So um, I, 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 I'd be afraid to give you a date. Okay. <laughs> just want to clarify a lot of these improvements uh, that we're doing to the park at the park are grant funds that we've gotten in lieu of us actually having to pay one of the questions that I get most often about the park is where are we coming up with all this money for the park well the issue here is, is these are grant funds that we're getting that we're spending in the park to make these improvements mm -hmm. and so 
I think it I think it's very important for us to continue to reiterate that as it relates to cash flow and where the funds are coming. We're not spending this money uh, that that is the taxpayer's dollar uh, per se. It's monies that we grant were granted from the state. So I like to say that every time we do this, just to clarify. Good. Very good. Any further comments from the council? Comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Thank Woods. You. Item seven, consider awarding bid for the refuse and cardboard containers, Public Works Department sponsor, Mr. Greg Brown. Mayor and Council, we recently advertised and received bids uh, for uh, refuse and cardboard containers. I would recommend uh, the low bidder in each item uh, be awarded the bid, which is uh, waste equip and Baker's waste equipment. All right, do we have a motion and a second Move to approve? approve. We have a motion. We have a second. 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 And we have a second. Any discussion by the council? Any comments from the audience? See none. All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Brown. Item eight. Consider approval of. <clears throat> excuse me. Consider approval of proposal for leak detection services. Water Quality Control Department sponsor, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, we've taken uh, proposals to perform a leak detection sur survey <clears throat> on a portion of our water distribution system <clears throat> and have received two proposals. We would recommend the low proposal of Richards LMC of $13,530. All right, thank you, Mr. Kelly. Do we have a motion and a second? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion by the Council? Any comments from the audience? Seeing no comments, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Item nine, consider awarding bid for the Ridgedale <coughs> TTU area, various, <coughs> excuse me, various sewer rehab projects, water quality control, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. This is some projects that we annually try to get done on the sewer rehab, and we've broken it down into three, three contracts. The first contract consisted of um, some new sewer line. It's about 1,100 feet of sewer extension out on Richdale Drive. There were some uh, two or three parcels out there. The receptive tanks failed. We've had the state go in and look. They can't. They have no option to do it. It's fairly easy for us to extend the line up, so we put that in this bid. Uh, we, we're going to replace some 10 and 12, 8-inch uh, pipe over at Tennessee Tech uh, drainage basin around the pump station. That's contract one. The James Bush construction was the low bidder, $97,614. On the uh, second contract, it was a manhole rehab. We have some manholes around town, various places that deteriorate over time. This contract will come back in, spray wall with epoxy coating, and get those back up into shape. Spectra Tech was the low bidder, $110,260 on that contract, number two. And then contract number three, was sort of the final portion of the Tennessee Trek Basin, uh, drainage basin, where we will go in to the last, <clears throat> let me, I'll pull up a map, but it's, it's hard to see. They're sort of bounced around all over the city, so that last one, the big one, is $421,000, and it's Reynolds Inliner. It's basically TVN, last sections of those pipes around Tennessee Tech, and then rehabbing what we find that needs to be rehabbed. And we'd recommend approval on all of those contracts. <clears throat> all right. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Do we have a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion by the council? Mr. Kelly, on my spreadsheet, it shows a low bidder of Bush construction. Uh, I think uh, – let, let me look at that. I may have – should have – made you guys next copies because I think when I talked to Kathy you hadn't made the made the uh, on contract number two. Oh okay. Yeah. Contract number one. Two. two. Number two shows Bush they didn't meet specs and that was a revision that I thought Kathy said I hadn't hadn't made your all's copies yet so yeah, he well had it's okay his, it was just he uh, I took my book home okay. okay yeah I did too uh, yeah. the uh and so it was just highlighted in here I just want to make sure there okay wasn't a yeah question. Spectra so, Tech so was the one the low bidder meeting specs yeah. okay Bush construction did not meet the spec oh, okay. on that on that the, contract <clears throat> yes. Very good. any further discussion by the council any other comments? Seeing none, all vote. 
Thank you. Five against false. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. <coughs> And that concludes our new business portion of our meeting. And at this time, we have a hearing of citizens and or delegations. We invite you to come and share your ideas and comments to the city council. Um, we're glad to give you up to three minutes. And we would, uh, I'll open up the floor to the council at this time. If you have any announcements, I have one that I'd like to just uh, compliment uh, Mr. Rick Woods and the entire leisure services staff that puts on quite a performance at the uh, Leslie Town Center for the father-daughter uh, dance. It is quite a spectacle, and it is fantastic for the for fathers and their daughters. Um, I, I tell you, those three nights of that, th those, your staff, you and your staff have worked tremendous to make that happen, and it's, I'm very appreciative, and I think everybody that attends is very appreciative as well. So thank you for that. I'd like to. Thank you, Thanks, Rick. But it just seems like it gets better every year. Very hard to do that whenever you do things like that. So yeah, it's very good. And the girl, you know, well, I can speak for my daughter. She, that's the highlight of the year. It really is. Not with dad. So it's a, uh, it's very uh, great time. Just thankful for it. And can't can't eat enough chocolate fountain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, usually my girls come out of there and that night are asking when's the next night they can go to father daughter day. So. I really commend you for My daughter's 18 this year, and we, for 15 years in a row, have been the last one standing on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, and then I have my two twin four-year-olds now that, that are taking that up, up that, too. So uh, we had a great time. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, this past weekend, <coughs> Leisure Services also had a play at the Drama, uh, whoops, at the Cookville Performing Arts Center. <laughs> and... You know, I think that when we hear about things that are going on in Cookville that are sponsored by the city of Cookville, we forget what a quality of life we have here and how pleasant it is to be able to be in this town and be able to have so many things that you can do that are sponsored by the city. And um, I appreciate that the city does that and that we have all these wonderful facilities and um things going on and school is in tomorrow so everybody needs to get their children up <laughs> not say anything about getting the teachers up <laughs> we'd also like to say get well soon Terry Clark uh, who yes. uh, yeah. works in our uh, planning <coughs> services he makes all the maps for us on Planning Commission so we'd be flying blind without Terry and, <laughs> uh, so we're thankful to hear that uh, he's doing much better now and so just ready to have him back but come back at your own pace yeah, but we're just want to extend our thanks to him and thankfulness to the couple regional medical center staff for taking good care of our citizens too so very good absolutely um i would like to, to uh, make comment about um <laughs> this, with this bad weather that uh, all the departments have had to um, adjust and change schedules and so forth and had to do a lot of extra work salting the streets and so forth and now we've got like potholes and don't know what to do with them and <laughs> and can't do anything with them. But um, anyway, to thank you and of course the uh, strain on police departments, fire departments, all departments had um, extra things to do, and so we do appreciate uh, the extra mile that you had to go during this bad weather, and uh, it just shows what a good uh, system we've got here. I'm thankful for it. Very good. If you want to see potholes, drive Interstate 40 uh, down <laughs> from Monterey. It's um, awful. Wow. Well, everybody's got them, so we just, um, there's not any, uh, it would be lucky. interesting to hear, you know, what's going to be the plan to, <coughs> you can't do anything yet, right, Mr. Mm -hmm. Brown? I mean, you have to wait till, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. got to wait till some, you can gotta wait make some of that stuff asphalt. to put in the holes. Yeah. Very good. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.